Hello everybody, this is Matt with Heat Signature Films. I'm currently the writer and director of Sons of the Forest fan film. Now if you were here, you probably have seen Sons of the Forest fan film and are more curious about what happened behind the scenes. This video is to answer that exact question. During this video, I will bring you up to speed as to where Heat Signature Films is and where it's been and how we are at this point right now. And where Heat Signature Films plans to go for its future projects. Keeping all this in mind, if you have not seen Sons of the Forest fan film, it would not be a good idea to watch this video first. I recommend you go back and watch Sons of the Forest, and then come back to this video later to satisfy your curiosity. To start off, we have to go back to 2014 when the Forest video game was released by End Night Games. To sum it up, this game was awesome. Us being video game fans, we couldn't ignore the fact that fan films were a possibility. We just came fresh off the heels of our fan film to the Elder Scrolls universe called Elder Scrolls Revocation. It did moderate, didn't get a lot of views, but we enjoyed doing it and we thought maybe we could do it again. So why not? Why not make a fan film to the forest? In 2015, Heat Signature Films dropped the fan film to the forest. It was made with no script in mind, improv all the way. All the props were made at the last minute and it took an afternoon of filming. Our effects weren't up to date and we were using mostly obsolete cameras during this time, but it was a fun project nonetheless. We tried to cover the bases of the video game. Cannibals? Check. Luggage? Check. Throwing a tennis ball? Check. Survival? Check. As it began to grow in views, there were a lot of comments suggesting that the effects weren't on par, the cannibals didn't look like the cannibals, and a lot of complaints regarding wanting to see mutants or monsters slash creatures. All of that would be changed in the near future. As of now, the fan film to the forest sits at 12k views, and that's all thanks to you guys. And all you newcomers, feel free to check it out. It's not as good as Sons of the Forest, but it certainly gives you an idea of where we came from. About five years ago, Heat Signature Films expressed interest in continuing the series of the forest with a small teaser. But inspiration quickly dried out and we took the teaser down. For a while things just slowed down. Heat Signature Films did other films, originals mostly. And then this happened. Midnight Games dropped a trailer for Sons of the Forest. The trailer looked amazing. After seeing that trailer we knew we had to come back. The inspiration was back. The light was back. This time we were going to do it better. Better production, better effects, better cameras. Sons of the Forest was getting a fan film. We knew the biggest challenge going into this film would be making it seem real. End Night had upped their game, so we needed to as well. The whole movie was storyboarded, script was made, and then each character was broken down into what we would actually need for that specific character. Oh, and of course, what mutants slash creatures would we be introducing this time? It was ultimately decided that there would be no dialogue in this film. There would be your occasional grunt, scream, profanity from the soldier, but we predominantly wanted him to be alone. One of the characteristics we made for the soldier was that he was injured. This would make his movements slow, deliberate, and desperate. By putting the soldier in a scenario where he's alone and injured, it made the movie feel more like a fight for survival, less than frolicking through the woods, so to speak. And that contributed to the overarching theme of survival at all costs. The hunter cannibal sequence was designed to build tension. We knew going into this we wanted a single cannibal to be hunting the soldier. We wanted to give the impression that most of his team had already been killed or consumed by the hunter cannibal. The sequence slowly reveals the hunter cannibal until their final fight. The whole sequence was designed around elevating tension and putting you in the shoes of the soldier. When writing the scene, I thought of it from the perspective of the hunter cannibal and what it would be like preparing for war when an intruder comes. This is why we gave the hunter cannibal a skull helmet and the proper weapons to dispose of his enemies and subsequently consume them. When we first saw the trailer, we saw this gigantic cannibal wearing a mask, a gold mask holding up another cannibal by his throat. I'm sure you guys remember. 
When we saw this monstrous cannibal, we decided that he needed to be in the film, and he needed to be an overimposing force against our hero. Again, we thought of the perspective from the cannibal and what it would be like having an intruder in his territory. During the film, we wanted to make it seem like the masked cannibal was saving him for later, so to speak, keeping him held captive in the cave, and our hero narrowly escapes. Overall, I think the masked cannibal is a little bit more scary than the hunter cannibal. Ah yes, fingers. That was the mutant we chose to display in this movie. The issue was trying to create him and make him real. I'll just flat out tell you, fingers is a guy in a suit. Think of him like a pillowcase with an open mouth. The real challenge was trying to figure out how to make fingers appear real, and we felt that the only way to do that would be to make a full body suit rather than a miniature or go CGI. That being said, Heat Signature Films has relatively stayed in the area of practical effects, and why not keep it that way for the monster? We knew making this movie that presenting a mutant would be one of the hardest challenges, but we were able to overcome that. But I can tell you who suffered the most regarding this would be the actor who played Fink. He didn't have a lot of room to work, and it was a very difficult suit to work in. You're fine? Yep, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. I'm ready to get out, though. Yeah, my arms need to move. Hi. Hello? <laughs> now, if you're looking at this title and thinking, Dr. Cross, where was he? Go back and watch the movie again and stay till the post credit scene. That's right. Dr. Cross does make an appearance in this movie at the very end post credit. Obviously this is a flashback and Dr. Cross is played by yours truly. That being said we wanted to throw out a callback to the old game as well possibly before Dr. Cross had changed into the Red Cannibal. And with that throwback we wanted to go a step farther and show the moment Dr. Cross discovered the artifact. But I'm not going to show it to you here. Go back and watch it. So what are we doing now? I'm sure all of you are asking that. I'm sure most of you that have come here to watch this have already seen the movie, want to see more, and are wondering what's going on with Eat Signature Films. I recently put up a poll on YouTube. Got a total of four votes, all saying we should continue making fan films. That being said, I'm sure all of you are concerned about what fan films are we gonna make? Well, I don't personally like to discuss what films we're preparing for because sometimes those movies don't fall through. But that being said, I have recognized the overwhelming response to Sons of the Forest and the Forest fan film prior to that. I'm seeing a lot in the comments that you want to see more. I can tell you that I am currently writing more stories in the universe of the forest. That includes The Forest One and Sons of the Forest. That being said, we will be doing our best to prepare and take up the project that is right for us at the time. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes breakdown commentary of Sons of the Forest. Again, I'm Matt from Heat Signature Films. Thank you for watching, and it's been a pleasure.